Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh. All right, minute. Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back to Jack's Drinkwater Southern Cooking and Barbecue. In today's video, we're gonna be smoking up a Gorilla Ribeye. You're gonna wanna stick around for this one. All right, as you guys can see that we have this massive Gorilla of a Ribeye. This is three inches thick and two and a half pounds. So to start with, we are going to season this up with uh, some of this right here. This is some uh, beef rub by Arvadella Pepper. It's, if you didn't have this, easily do salt and pepper. This has like salt, pepper, garlic, some paprika. I've used this uh, on burgers last week and I've also used it on some steak. I'll leave a link below where you can get some of this if you want. But again, just use salt and pepper if you don't have this or any, any other thing you want. And we're just gonna season this joke up. So now that we got this gorilla all nice and seasoned up, we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna make us up a marinade. We're gonna let this hang out in that marinade for about 24 hours. So our marinade starts off with one cup of beef broth, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Now you'll notice that my color here is kind of different and that's because I'm actually using this. This is made by Steens uh, and this is a cane vinegar. Uh, I'll leave a link where you can get some of this too if you want. If not, just use red wine vinegar. Next going in is balsamic vinegar. And that was two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar and two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. And then uh, the reason why I'm using this uh, Steens here is because I'm going in with some Steens pure cane syrup. Now, I'll show you what that looks like as well. Looks like that. I love this stuff. I use it on pancakes, biscuits, everything. If you weren't able to get steens, then just use molasses. And that was three tablespoons of that. So we're just going to give this a little whisk here. Get everything nice and incorporated. And let's, we'll get it into a bag. All right, so that was quick and painless. So what I like to do now, and if you didn't have one of these Ziploc or these bags here, you could just use a Ziploc. I'm gonna seal this up real quick. So I'm gonna be using the uh, VacMaster VP210 for this job right here. All right, let's give her a go. Nice. All right, best vac sealer on the planet in my opinion. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow, and we'll be throwing this on the Masterbuilt 560. All right, welcome back. It's been, uh, hell, it's been a little over 24 hours. So I just took it out of the marinade about five minutes ago, and right now I'm just patting it dry, getting most of that marinade off. I got the Masterbuilt 560 set to 225 degrees, so we're going to throw it in there. We're going to throw some smoke on it, and then we'll give it a sear off. All right, so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna put it on that bottom shelf there. I'm gonna put it on the I got it on this first little shelf going on right there All right, I'm not sure how long this is gonna take we're gonna try to bring it up as slow as we can I got some uh, Mesquite in there for smoke. We almost forgot to put the probe in there I'm just gonna go make sure you're not hitting any fat now All right, we're looking for medium rare, but remember we're gonna sear this off, so we need a little bit of carry over there. So we're gonna to try to pull it, probably, I'm gonna to try to pull it anywhere between 115 and 118 degrees. All right, so we've reached 90 degrees here. So we're just gonna give this a little flip real quick. Delicious. All right, we've reached about 118 degrees here. Go ahead and get this sucker off. All right, so we're just going to dry off some of this moisture here. That fat seam wants to pull this joker apart. 
Now what we're gonna do now is go over it with a light coat of mayonnaise. It's gonna put a really nice crust on it. If you didn't wanna use mayonnaise, just you could use some regular uh, flavorless oil, something like that. And when I say a light coat, I just mean like very light coat over it. You, you won't even taste this, believe me. All right, now I'm gonna put this on the soapstone and when I put that down, I'm gonna go over it with a layer on the other side while it's on the soapstone. So we're about ready to throw this on the soapstone. We're just waiting for it to heat up a little bit, but I forgot to mention when the steak reached 90 degrees, I went ahead and lit me up a full chimney of lump charcoal and by the time this hit 115, that charcoal was ready to go into my Weber kettle here. I'm using the slow and sear just to heat up this soapstone. Right, we're getting uh, about 363, about 362. I'm going to try to get it to four. I'm going to try to get it to about 400. All right, I, I, I'm not even going to use tongs on this. This thing is so delicate. Do a minute, then flip it, see what we're looking like, and then I'm going to flip it back, try to continuously flip about every minute. All right, let me put that mayonnaise on. Smells incredible. Let me get those. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sear those sides without it tearing apart. That fat right there, that big fat cap, man, it's that fat seam right there is causing some problems. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh. All right, minute. All right, let's cut into this joker. The Gorilla Ribeye. Looks pretty good. Let's just uh, let's move this out of the way. <clears throat> Cooked to perfection like I like it. I pulled it at 130, by the way. Let it rest five minutes. She's nice and juicy. Oh man. Hmm. Nice and beefy on the inside. That marinade, it doesn't penetrate all the way through this big thick steak. So you kind of get that flavor just on the top of that. And then you get that beefiness on the inside. I would definitely use this marinade again. Um, doesn't need any kind of sauce. We made some uh, chanterelle mushrooms that we're gonna put with this. This is awesome. All right guys. Try it out. The Gorilla Ribeye done on the Masterbuilt 560 and then sear it off on the soapstone. Do it.